Welcome aboard Brown Coats, Space Cowboys, and Cowgirls. Today we are taking a ride on the Serenity to explore the wild, wild west of space and pay tribute to one of the most beloved cult sci-fi shows of all time, Firefly. We'll delve into its heartbreaking cancellation, the passionate fandom that refused to let it die, and the hopes and rumors surrounding a possible Disney reboot. So grab your favorite drink from the galley, kick back, and join us for our journey into the verse. Firefly was the brainchild of writer and director Joss Whedon, who had been riding high with the great success that was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Whedon envisioned a show that would combine his love of science fiction with his fascination for the American Old West. Greatly inspired by the John Wayne film Stagecoach about a group of strangers traveling together in the Old West, Whedon imagined Firefly as part space opera, part western, much in the vein of animes such as Outlaw Star or Cowboy Bebop, although the series would go on to be described as bordering on the steampunk genre. He wrote the pilot episode and pitched it to Fox, who immediately ordered 14 episodes for the very first season. The result was Firefly, set in the year 2517 and following the crew of the Serenity as they traveled across the Verse, a colloquialism for the universe, or all the regions of outer space known to mankind. Taking place after humans colonized a new star system and centering around the adventures of a ragtag crew of misfits as they travel the galaxy taking on various jobs to survive. In this future, the only two surviving superpowers, the United States and China, fuse to form the central federal government, often called the Alliance, resulting in the fusion of the two cultures. According to Whedon's visions, nothing will change in the future. Technology will advance, but we will still all have the same political, moral, and ethical problems as today. The cast includes nine unique characters aboard the ship, each with their own motivations and perspectives. Whedon described the series as being about, quote, nine people looking into the blackness of space and seeing nine different things. Throughout the series, the crew encounters various challenges including rival gangs, corrupt officials, and the dangerous reavers who are a very interesting concept often described as men that went insane at the edge of space and became savage. Quote, they stared into the void beyond and became what they saw, nothing. The show blends elements of science fiction, westerns, and drama, creating a unique and compelling universe that has captivated audiences for years and developed a cult following almost instantaneously. The show was filmed in Los Angeles, allegedly for about one to two million per episode, using a mixture of practical sets and computer-generated effects. Many shortcuts were taken to cut costs, including reusing assets and costumes from other franchises, including some from Starship Troopers. The pilot episode was shot in December 2001, with the rest of the episodes filmed from July to December 2002. From the start, Firefly came out of the gate guns blazing and didn't need time to find its footing, unlike some series that need a couple seasons to establish their identity. Firefly seemingly had a clear objective and well-defined identity from the outset, laying the groundwork for a wealth of potential content in the future. As a space western, it offered a fresh take on the classic genres, incorporating a variety of different elements to make something altogether different and unique. The series also had a larger, overarching narrative that would have been thrilling to witness if the episodes had continued. Agonizingly, just as the show really began to hit its stride, it was abruptly cancelled. The cancellation of Firefly has been the subject of much speculation, but seemed to be the result of several contributing factors. The primary of which was the show's production cost. Despite being a well-crafted series, Firefly was just not attracting enough viewers to justify its budget, making its cancellation a simple equation in the television industry. However, many fans hold Fox responsible for the show's untimely demise, and held to scrutiny, their arguments do hold some weight. Fox allegedly interfered with the show's creative process by requesting Reedon to rewrite some episodes and dictating character details. 
Additionally, the promotional trailers for Firefly really failed to capture the true nature of the show, instead presenting it as a quirky genre comedy rather than the gritty space drama it was. These hilariously bad advertisements misrepresented Firefly on a fundamental level and neglected to showcase its unique strengths as a groundbreaking series. The scheduling of Firefly was another contributing factor to the demise of the series. In the pre-Netflix era, audiences were required to watch television during the scheduled broadcasting times. Unfortunately, Firefly was assigned to the undesirable Friday night death slot, the least popular primetime slot where shows were commonly set to die during the early 2000s. Furthermore, Fox aired the show's episodes out of order, including airing the two-hour pilot at the end of the season, which needless to say disrupted the pacing of the story and the character's development. To compound matters, the last three episodes were never even aired, prematurely ending the series that was already cut too short due to poor management and marketing. However, despite all of this, during its original three-month broadcast run on Fox in late 2002, Firefly garnered a devoted following of fans who would go on to call themselves Browncoats. These fans banded together in an effort to save the show from cancellation, raising funds for an ad in Variety magazine, and launching a postcard campaign. These efforts, and the passion of the cult following, eventually convinced Universal Studios to create a feature film called Serenity. According to Whedon, the film was titled Serenity because Fox still held the rights to the name Firefly. In an attempt to generate excitement and boost ticket sales when the film was released globally on September 30th, 2005, numerous early screenings were held for existing fans. Despite fan hopes for commercial success, the film opened at number two and only earned $40 million worldwide during its initial theatrical run. After Serenity's performance in the box office failed to materialize additional seasons or movies in the Firefly universe, the franchise has since continued in various forms of media, including comics, novels, and a tabletop role-playing game. From 2005 to 2017, Dark Horse Comics released a series of comic books called Serenity. These comics were part of the Firefly media franchise and a continuation of the series. The comics were released sporadically as a number of standalone stories, with reception being a bit hit and miss. Some reviews criticized the comics for it being difficult to comprehend for those who were not already familiar with the source material, as well as being accused of being inferior replacements of the original visual media. In 2018, Boom Studios took over and started publishing their own line of Firefly comics. It is a canonical continuation of the universe, with Whedon allegedly acting as a consultant. The general consensus from fans seemed to be that the Dark Horse comics were of a bit of a higher standard, while the Boom comics took a noticeable drop in quality, although the series continues to this day, so there's still a chance for a potential rebound. On the film side of things, rumors of a Firefly reboot on Disney Plus have been circulating since Disney acquired the intellectual property from Fox in 2019. However, there have been no official announcements from Disney regarding the series. Allegedly, Disney has written several pilots for the show, some completely rebooting the series, with others trying to integrate the old show. However, finding that sweet spot of pleasing the old fans and creating content appropriate for a Disney platform may prove more difficult than intended. According to some rumors, the reboot would reportedly restart the adventures of Captain Reynolds and his crew with the intention of selling the show to a younger generation. However, these seem a bit unlikely as the original cast of the series is all 20 years older. Not to mention, many of them stay busy with other projects and would likely be unavailable to return. The new series would probably have to start from a clean slate from a casting standpoint, as it's hard to imagine Firefly without Nathan Fillion. Given the ongoing workplace harassment allegations against Joss Whedon, it is probable that a Firefly revival would proceed without his involvement. Warner Media conducted an investigation which led to Whedon's departure from the Nevers on HBO Max. It is likely that producers, including Disney, would be wary of working with him. Nevertheless, Disney's ownership of the intellectual property and their desire to compete in the sci-fi genre suggests that a Firefly reboot may still be in development. 
The legacy of Firefly is one of resilience and continued relevance. Despite its premature cancellation, the show has garnered a devoted following that has only grown over time. The show's influence continues to be seen in other popular sci-fi works such as The Mandalorian and even video games such as The Outer Worlds. Other legacy spin-off media include The Signal, a fan-produced podcast dedicated to the Firefly universe which initially served as guerrilla marketing to promote Serenity. It features discussions about the franchise's role-playing game, fan fiction as audio dramas, and interviews. The show received numerous awards, including two People's Choice Podcast Awards and three Parsec Awards. In 2005, Firefly was voted the world's best space sci-fi ever in an internet poll held by New Scientist Magazine's website, with Serenity coming in second. Entertainment Weekly listed Firefly at number 11 in the 25 best cult TV shows from the past 25 years in 2012 commenting on its enhanced legend due to its martyrdom. Serenity was voted the best science fiction movie of all time in an SFX magazine poll. A 10th anniversary special was shown on the Science Channel in 2012 and the cast and crew received a standing ovation at a 10th anniversary panel. The fanbase has also been active with creating their own media in absence of official titles. A fan-made documentary called Done the Impossible was released in July 2006, featuring interviews with Joss Whedon and cast members. A fan-made sequel to Serenity called Browncoats Redemption premiered at DragonCon in 2010, with all proceeds from the DVD and Blu-ray sales and admission receipts being donated to five charities. The project received Whedon's approval and ended up raising over 100 k for the causes. Firefly's legacy is a testament to the power of great storytelling, and the impact it can have on audiences long after its initial release. Most heartwarming of all, in my opinion, is that the NASA astronaut Steven Swanson brought Firefly and Serenity DVDs on a space shuttle mission in 2007, and they were added to the media collection on the International Space Station, so in a way, the show finally did return to the verse. So in conclusion, Firefly was a kick-ass sci-fi show with a space western twist following the adventures of a misfit crew on the Serenity. With a unique blend of sci-fi western and drama, it captivated audiences and developed a huge cult following. Unfortunately, it was cancelled just after one season due to high production costs and poor scheduling, but fans refused to let it die and continued to champion for it, leading to a movie and rumors of a Disney reboot. Firefly may have been short-lived, but its impact on pop culture and sci-fi fans is undeniable and it lives on even to this day. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this till the end. Uh, this is only my third video ever, so please, if you like it, give a like and subscribe. It'll really help me get this channel off the ground. As always, I'm always looking for new content, so if you guys have any ideas about what I should cover next, feel free to let me know. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.